Good evening everyone, my name is Matthew Allen and I'm going to be giving you a demonstration on our estimating software this evening. What we're going to do today is we're going to run through Estimator Express and its speed and accuracy. All right, so firstly, when you're actually looking at the software, this is going to be your home page. All right, so you're going to be able to see your previous jobs that have been estimated. You're going to be able to see a job win rate versus jobs lost. And then a job status breakdown, so awaiting customer reply, due to start, unsuccessful, and so on. All right. Over on the left-hand side, you have your library. You can click the drop-down box, so everything's nice and neat on the left-hand side. Or you can click the word library, and it spreads everything across the screen for you. Now, a few of these in the middle here. So you've got your overhead profit and inflation. Click this button, and then you'll be able to put the percentages on top of your material, your labor, your plant, your subcontractor, and your sundry items. OK, you've also got the option there for an inflation rate, and that's just whether or not you want to add that on at the very end of a job. OK, back to the library. We then have your price books on the left hand side, so your material through to your sundry. And if I click labor, what you're going to be able to do is see the list of tradesmen that we have within the software now. OK, so what you can see here, are two bricklayers to make, your bricklayer, bricklayer two. You've even got one called Tommy. All right. And what you can do here is you can actually change all the pricing of your tradesmen. All right. So with a double click, you can change the price up here. So £31.25. We're breaking your working day into an eight hour day. All right. So this is working out at £250 a day. All right. If I were to change that to, say, £25 an hour, so £200 a day, I can click OK. That's now 25 and that's now time stamped to the last eight. I change that price. OK, now one thing that's very important, if you want to create multiple tradesmen, because you might be working with two joiners, two bricklayers, something like that, and they work individually on different projects for you. All you have to do is if you want to create a tradesman, highlight their trade. And the reason behind this is because as we've got bricklayer up here, I can go new resource. And it's pulling in that HBXL code. All right. Reason it does that is because when you want to swap out a tradesman for another tradesman, OK, the likelihood is you're not going to swap out a bricklayer for a joiner. You're probably going to just swap them out and put somebody that's of the same craft in his place. And that's what you want. And that's what the software is going to give you. OK, so just be aware of that. Going from labor into plant. Now, this firstly is covering your uh, wear and tear and then your rental costs. So wear and tear such as axis towers, cherry pickers, scissor lifts, OK, things that you may not own yourself okay and you're going to have to rent and then you've got your wear and tear items such as your dust sheets shovels sledgehammers things that will over time break get mislaid lost all right you want to make sure that these things are covered it's not going to stick 12 quid on per week over the course of the job so if you're on a job for 12 weeks it's not going to charge a client 144 quid for dust sheets it's going to say right okay then over the course of this job we've used our dust sheets five six seven times Right, we're going to charge a client two, three quid for that. OK, so that's what we want to do. We just want to make sure in the back of your mind, you know that these charges are being made because sooner or later things are going to break. You want to make sure that's not coming out of your pockets, coming out of your profit, uh, coming out of your business and being charged for. All right. Last but not least, your material. Now, we've got three to four thousand materials in the software from the very beginning. So we do have a search function at the top. You can type in timber. However, this is going to be as accurate as you need it to be. OK, so Timber is going to bring in timber nails, screws, uh, sawn angle fillets. OK, that just might just be too much information for you to be able to care about. OK, you might want to be looking for joists. So I could type in joist or I can be even more accurate and type in C24. And this is going to bring in everything for C24, including a couple of gas boilers. OK, but the likelihood is you're looking for joists. Now, away from this, a common question we do ask is how do I work with my merchants? How do I get their prices into the software? So what we work with, well, who we work with anyway, is our Travis Perkins, TradePoint and Keyline, and we work with them straight out of the box. OK, so if you have accounts with these merchants, give us your account number and we can then contact them, say that you own our software, they'll send your prices over, we'll feed that into the software for you. If not, absolutely fine. Contact your merchant, ask them for a material cost, uh, a material spread, spreadsheet okay with their prices on and we can help you feed that into the software okay so any merchant that you're working with we can help you get their information into the package okay last couple of things on this page before i show you the speed of the actual estimating instead of how the cogs are actually turning we've got your specifications 
on the right hand side and then you've got your data reports firstly specifications essentially just like a specification that you are working on at the moment or you read through on a regular basis okay what this is going to do is this is going to be your default throughout the software okay so if you want to make any changes to teams personnel materials do it here and it's going to cover the entirety of the software okay so that could be the price of concrete that you're paying we've got 110 pound per cubic meter for your mass film and 115 pound if it's going to be um your more premium concrete if you're going to be using trench blocks okay we've got straight out of the box two bricklayers in a mate doing your brickwork you might be working with a bricklayer in a mate so if you were doing that you could just right click change the resource and find bricklayers mate bricklayer in a mate instead okay and then you can swap that out or if you're not even try uh charging for the trades you can highlight them all right click and go not required okay that way then at least you can just say i'm calculating everything uh for the for the build but i'm not calculating for any of the labor when it comes to the shell okay you're just going to calculate for the materials and bring everything else in subcontract and that can be set up all right lastly the reports this is how you're going to want your reports to look at the very end of your quote okay not your actual quote but the information that the software is going to give you such as your material order schedule your materials used so the material order schedule is going to look something like this all right and we're going to be able to see the software so if we had a job starting it back in 2018 it seems we can say that okay for the sips frames and the plumbing first fix we've got our ready mix concrete internal wall sips who we're buying it from the merchant resource code how much we need to order and how much it's going to cost us okay and it's going to do that throughout the job as well electrical first fix second fix plumbing first fix and so on okay if you like how it looks brilliant if you don't like how it looks just come in here chop and change and have a bit of a play around all right and if you want us to sit there with you for 15 20 minutes to help you with this that's absolutely fine just give us a call and we'll be happily uh we'll happily do that with you as well to make sure that when you do pass this information across to maybe your uh your foreman uh, your accounts team your accountant it's in the format that you need it to be okay so back to the dashboard before we actually go into an estimate okay does anybody have any questions so if you could just type them in on the right hand side i'll answer them before we actually shoot into the estimation so how would you change from a plaster and a mate uh, or from two plasters and a mate to a plaster and a mate that's absolutely fine so if you want to do it as an overhaul across the job okay well across your company all you have to do is just go into your library find the specification that you're going to be following so rule of thumb well my rule of thumb anyway is only ever focus on one specification all right the likelihood is the teams that you use across every job are going to be the same teams okay so focus on one i just use the extension specification because it just seems to be perfect for me and then i can scroll down i can find where we've got our plasterers so i can see that we've got two bricklayers to make two plasters to make here fix and applying plaster the walls apply the plaster finish as well so all i've got to do is just right click here go change resource and then find out where my plasters and the mate are so i can go plumber and a mate plasters mate well you'd think that one would be quite easy to find plaster and a mate well we've got all oh, we've got some large teams in there we don't have well shock me we don't have a plaster and a mate we only have teams here plaster or plasterer's mate no well i'm perplexed by that terribly sorry guys but what would happen is if this was the case and for this one, I'm actually going to give you a demonstration of how you would actually sort this out, really. So you've got two plasters and a mate here. The likelihood is, um, well, we've got £63 an hour. What I would do is I'd create a new resource. And I'd call this plaster and a mate. Okay. I would then work out 
and type this in to make sure that it is grammatically correct. I'd work out what their hourly rate is. So if they are going to be saying uh, 400 pounds a day between them, okay, you can just go, okay, 400 pounds a day divided by eight is 50 pounds an hour. All right. And you'd be able to pop that in there. Click OK. And then you would select that resource. And you can pop that one in there as well for you. And that would be your two, uh, that would be your plasterer animate. All right. But believe me, Simon, I didn't actually, actually didn't know that we didn't have one plaster animate in there. That's, um, that's bugged with me. So that's, uh, thanks for that. At least I can go back to the, uh, <laughs> the development team now and give them a bit of a telling off. Right. Anybody else want to throw me uh, throw me under the bus? I'll uh, I'll sit here and wait. It's absolutely fine. Right, perfect. So, going to the dashboard, we create a new job. We've got four options available, and we're going to go with the top one today, which is going to be quick from a standard job template. Selecting that, we then have our templates pop up on screen. So we've got our single story to our wraparound, multi story, multi story, single story mixed. We've then got some conservatories in there, bungalows, housing apartments, single and double driveways, uh, driveways, garages, and they're detached and attached as well. All right. So if I were to go with, say, no, let's go with a uh, Apex single roof, single story extension. Sorry, because I haven't done one of those in a while. It seems. What's going to happen is this template is then going to load up for us in the page. All right. And what you'll then be able to see is a nice image of a uh, Apex extension. We've got 3.9 from the house uh, to the actual edge of the extension. Do you know what? I lost my wording then. So we've got length and width. So 3.9 for the length. 4.2 for the width. Okay. Up in the top right hand corner there, we then have the construction cost, the profit and overhead, and the sales price. Okay. That is excluding VAT at the moment. Okay. So if I were to hold my mouse across that as well, what you would then get is a breakdown of the costs. Okay. So the footings, foundations, internal decoration, internal preparation. And that's where that price is coming from at the moment. You've then got the brick and block cavity wall. Floor screen to extensions, extension slab, apex roof, and so on. Okay, so what I can do is if I wanted to see that information in a little bit more detail, I can click where it says cost breakdown at the top of the screen. And then it's breaking everything down for me. So my brick and block cavity warm is broken down into aggregate, the blocks, the brick layers, bricks, brickwork sundries, and so on, all the way down to £7,627.21. If I wanted to see it broken down a little bit more, I can do it by build phase. I can click, say, masonry shell. That tells me what I'm spending on the aggregate, the blocks, brick layers, bricks, brickwork sundries, builder's metalwork, and the insulation as well. Okay, up to £4,901. If I wanted to change any of these dimensions, I just click, change. I can go six meters. This price in the top right-hand corner will change for me. Okay, and similarly, if I did this on the right hand side as well, to make it a nice round number, 14 meters, we've got 20,574 pounds. At the top of the screen, we can then see where we can pop in our uh, assumptions and emissions, our provisional sums, and our client details as well, so it then appears on the quote. Beneath that, we have a few yes, no questions to, as to what you're going to be providing for your client. Are you going to allow for the plastering? Yes, we are. Are we going to allow for the decoration? Yes, we are. If you're not, if your client said, do you know what? Just do everything up to the plaster. I'll be absolutely fine afterwards. You can untick that and everything going forward will have decoration unticked. And you'll see that in a moment. Are we going to allow for the internal finishing to the external walls? What this is, is we were asked a few times by, um, by clients, could we have an option that allows there to be a feature wall? In an extension so they're not going to do anything to that back wall so this white wall here they're saying that they're not going to plaster they're not going to decorate they're not going to chase out anything they're just going to have that as a nice brick back wall as a bit of a feature for the client and we've left that in there if you're not which is probably the case have that ticked 
and you're going to go for a dot and dab or a plaster on the buttons or depending on what you're going to be providing your client okay decorate fascias and soffits that's a no more often than not you're working with P uh, upvc cavity wall foundation depth below site strip so we're saying it's going to be a 900 mil dig unless you hit bedrock before that okay ceiling height downstairs 2.4 meters that's 2.4 from the top of dpc okay roof pitch downstairs i don't know why it's saying downstairs but roof pitch downstairs is going to be 45 degrees so we're happy with that we can change this if we like then we have your tire laid spacing your soffit width for the eaves and the soffit width for the gables and these are just your building reg standards to what people usually fit them to okay once you're happy with this information here we can then go through the resource specification and we're almost at the estimating part don't worry so we can go then edit specification and mini specs and this just allows us to just critique a few things in the software to get a bit of a more accurate price straight away. So we're going to stay with that extension specification. As I said, focus on the one. Don't have to worry about it after that. External wall brickwork. We've got that 80 pence brick, but then I can say, actually, I'm using a £1.30 brick. The roof tiling is going for a plain tile. I'm actually building this with a slate. Roof guttering. We've gone for plastic, but depending on the aesthetic you have to follow, you do have the option of uh, steel, zinc cast iron aluminium if you're working with a flat roof you've then got the option of the flat roof waterproofing so it's saying straight away fiberglass but you could be doing epdm basic felt premium felt single ply any other systems they should barge boards and soffits as we're not decorating them we're presuming that they're going to be upvc so that's already in there for us if we we're going to be doing a suspended floor in any part of this build we've then got different floorboard options available for you so you've got different tng Available to so chipboard, plywood, redwood, whitewood. From there, decoration, we're going to say we're going to leave that the same as the default up here. Then, last but not least, plant and labor for the excavation. Now, in the perfect world, you'll be able to get a mini digger on site. It's going to be able to turn perfectly and you'll be able to get in and out in a matter of hours. Likelihood is that's never going to happen. So, it could be a manual dig as well. Okay, so you do have that option available. Once you're happy with that, click OK. It will apply those changes to the cost of the job. Mine's gone up because I have made the brick more expensive. And then I can click completed on the right hand side. OK, clicking this box here has no implication or no impact, sorry, against the price of the job. OK, that's purely just for your benefit of going. I don't have to think about that again. OK. From here, we can then start tweaking how we want the build to look, because don't get me wrong, I know it's an image of a brick and block cavity wall but you might be doing a block and block with render and if that is the case with this drop down box here i can click that i can then see brick and sips brick and icf external cavity block wall so that's our block and block with render okay and if i click that the image changes okay so we're just going with a different change and a bit of a visual prompt and now we're back again then we've got three options available to us we've got the dimensions which is We've written DIMMs, we've got the resources, and we've got the estimating calculators. Now, these two are essentially the exact same information. However, they're just given to you differently. All right, and you'll see them in a second. Firstly, we'll go into the dimensions. And this is the dimension of everything but the shape of the extension. So purely the height of the walls, the overall length of the walls. And if it's in a green box, that means it's being automatically calculated for you. So we gave four by six, that's where we've got 14 meters. Gable dimensions, that's already been calculated for you. We've then got the foundation details. We've got 900 deep, as stated. 600 wide, we can change that if we want. And with 900 deep, with structural concrete, it's gone for a basic 500 mil worth of concrete. And structural concrete, that's our premium concrete. We're saying that we're going to be using trench blocks on top of this. If we're not, we can scratch that, we can zero it out, and we can put in 800, 900 mass fill, depending on what, what, what we want to work with. OK, next to that, plan construct the excavation. So you have no legal obligation at this step to have to support that foundation depth. OK, so that's why it's no doubt for you. You might be doing some build over, so you might have to plan construct a few things. OK, but if that is the case, change that to a yes. But more often than not, it's a no. OK, and then the bulking factor of the excavator material, that's 1.5. So we're saying for every cubic meter of the soil coming out of the ground, it's going to expand by half and then the spoil being taken away that's what's going to be calculated for you 
Next, we then have the footing details. So to the trained eye, you probably know what you're looking at here, but to somebody that's brand new to the building industry, they might go, oh, Christ, what am I looking at? So they can then tick these tech tips and tech labels. And then we can see everything that I click. It's going to tell me about it in the top right-hand side, including those trench blocks as well. We then have, is the main wall insulated? Yes, it is. Is there a separate DPC? Yes, there will be. And then are we plastering and decorating? And as you can see, we are plastering, but everything else is no doubt because we've said no to the decoration. Okay, so it's automatically doing that for us so we don't have to worry about flipping any boxes. All right. Now, what will happen, however, if you were to change this foundation depth, say 1.2 meters, the price would obviously change. But if I go back into that dimensions page, you can now see that that's 800 mil because it's automatically filled that up for you. And we now have the legal obligation to have to support that foundation depth. OK, so that's in there for you as well. All right. So it's always going to be automatically updated. When I add in a door, that zero, that's going to be calculated to the square meters that's been pulled out of that wall as well. All right. Pop that back to 0.9. From here, we then have the resources and the estimating calculator. As I said, this is basically the same information. So if I click resources first off, we then have the structural concrete, which is highlighted for us, telling us that it's 519 pounds and 23 pence. If I click the mass concrete, that's all zeroed out because we said that we're only going to be using the structural concrete. All right. We can see the resource used as well. I can hit the drop down box. And as you can see, all we have is concrete to be able to take its place. And that's what we want at the end of the day. OK, we only want to be told about the materials that can take its place. So cavity film again, we've got concrete, bricks for use in splash course. We've got a multitude of bricks. OK. From here, we can then have a look at the labor and the plant that's in there as well. So we can then go down to material, look at labor, lay bricks above DPC. I hover my mouse across that and it's saying two brick layers and a mate. But if I wanted to swap that out, I can click the drop down box and I'll be able to have four bricklayers and two mates, bricklayer and a mate, bricklayer two or Tommy, depending on who I'd created. All right. And then we have lay blocks above DPC again, bricklayers and a mate. And then we can actually have a look at the plastering. OK, so as you can see here, it's got two plasters and a mate. So then what we'd be able to do, we've got our plaster and a mate in there as well once I created it. All right. So we can pick him instead as well, because I'm surprised we don't have a plaster and a mate in this as a gang. It's bewildering. OK, so that's how you can see this information. And again, what you can do is you've got your cost breakdown there. You've always got your cost breakdown. Here as well. OK, so you can just click it and just see how it's going throughout. So you have that option or. You can click estimating calculator and it's going to be looking more like an Excel spreadsheet. OK, so firstly, it's going to just tell you about the length of the wall, the height of the wall. But then we've got the calculated resources. So we can see our mass concrete. Nothing in there. Our structural concrete. It's all filled out. It's going to go into a little bit more detail. So you can see that, OK, then for every cubic meter, we're charging 115 pounds. There is a 7.5 percent wastage. This is our supplier. And then we can see how much it's going to cost and how much of it's actually going to be wastage as well. All right. Do that for bricks. So bricks above DPC, less opening. And we can see exactly how much we're going to be investing in that as well. And if I go all the way down to the bottom where your plant is, I can see that we've got our shovel at the very bottom. And if I go to total cost on... The brickwork shell, we are charging your client 50 pence for the use of your shovel. So you can see we're not really making them break the bank when it comes to it. OK. Now, on this page, however, you do have an opportunity of adding it on extra bits and pieces to this brickwork shell. And what I mean by that, it's not just because you're thinking, OK, then I'm going to be needing uh, sandstone lintels. That comes later on when you start looking at the windows and the doors. What I mean by this is that you may be working as a that's going to be the office, a certain feature. Or certain or you have a. Uh, a certain method that you like to follow, which are in quite well, which you require to order uh, extra materials, use extra labor, something like that. OK, 
Okay, if that is the case, when you are in this page here, next to calculated resources, you do have sundry resources. So click that there, and up in the top right hand corner, you can then add on any additional material that you would like, any additional labor, any additional plant, subcontractors, sundry items, and so on. Okay, so that is there for your benefit as well if you need to add anything else in. Okay. Closing that. Once I am happy with that, I can click completed and I can then go onto the floors as well. Before I actually start going through the rest of the calculators and just showing you how we can build up this quote, okay, just want to know if anybody has any questions because the specification, the library, the reports, going through the dimensions, the resources, the estimating calculators, specifications, these yes no questions here, that's pretty much over the last 30 minutes you've seen how the software gets you to the point of estimating. Now, the first time you do your estimate, it's gonna be a little bit longer than you'd expect it to be in 30 minutes because you're just setting it up for your business. However, once all that's in place, you can just hit the ground running every time because it's gonna be set up to how you work. All right, and plus that's the most intense part about this software, everything else is just gonna be rolling forward now, which is quite nice. So if you have any questions, please and ask them now, I can then start going forward, showing you some more calculators, and then we can start looking at the build program, the quote, and then I can allow you uh, to crack on with your evening if you like. Or you can sit with me and we can go on till 10 o'clock. It doesn't bother me, I get paid anyway. Mesh in the foundation. So you're looking at um, pile foundations, yeah? More often than not, what we find is when somebody goes for pile foundations, um, they're actually, they're usually going to a subcontractor to give them a cost for that. Um, don't get me wrong, we are trying to create a calculator with that in, in mind, but more often than not, we do find that somebody doesn't really uh, calculate for that themselves. But if you did want to calculate for the foundations and for the mesh as well, what you can then do, again, go into that external walls, that estimating calculator, and start adding on the additional bits of material that you would need for that particular foundation. Okay. Does anybody else have any other questions? So we're seeing at the moment Okay, so right now, if you were to do just what we've estimated, so that's the brick and block work, the foundations, the plastering, the roof, plus what else have we done? Let's have a look. So yeah, so what we've done is the, the screed, the slab, apex roof, connecting wall plastering, brick and block cavity wall. That's everything that we've done, including all labor and material. The software has come out currently, yes, 27,000 pounds, excluding the VAT. And that's including profit as well. My profit's at 30% at the moment. So that's why my profit's coming in at 6,200 pound on a 20 grand on a 20, 20 grand job. Okay, your, yours might be a little bit higher, but mine's just for demonstration purposes at the moment. But yes, right now you are looking at that particular cost for that shell. May I ask if other people uh, would like to answer this question as well? If you were to calculate a six by four, uh, a six by four extension, what would you particularly, what would you on average charge for that? So you'd be doing about eighteen fifty a square meter, so about thirty six thousand pounds. Okay. So what we're looking at here is. Right, including that, that would be 31,200. And that's including electrics and plumbing. So, so what I would, as I've not done electrics or plumbing yet, I've got no windows, no doors in here, no steels yet. Okay, this is purely just solely construction cost on this side. 
But then saying that, your your teams may be more expensive depending on where you are within the UK as well. So you're looking at, for this particular job, you're looking at about 44,000 plus for that. Right. So what I'll do is I'm going to start processing this and going uh, um, through it a little bit further, okay? And we'll see what this price usually comes out at. All right. So once we're happy with the brick and block cavity wall, okay, we can click completed on that. We can then start looking at the flooring. So we've got your ground bearing slab. All right, we can go with ground bearing and insulated, ground bearing reinforced, insulated and reinforced. Okay, depending on how you're going to be doing. If I just go ground bearing insulated, okay, so we're just going to go with the insulation, the DPC, okay, the DPM. If I can look at the uh, dimensions, it's pulling in our square meterage as well, sand blinding, sub base, 100 mil slab as well, so you're standard, and we're happy with the DPM as well. OK. We can then have a look at the screed as well, whether or not it's going to be with mesh and insulation or just screed in its own. OK. No mesh or insulation. It could just be a, um, a wet screed. OK. So we could do that as well. And under the dimensions, I can say that we are absolutely going to be having a screed pump in there for the day as well. From there, we can then have a look at the roof. So we've got a cut roof. It's plastered and insulated to a flat ceiling. Okay, but this could be a vaulted ceiling. So that's us saying plaster and insulate to the rafters. And we could add in some veluxes as well. Okay, and we can go into the dimensions for this. Okay, to so the roof structure, the tiling, the roof finishes as well. Okay. From there, we do have an option of you being able to add in solar panels if you would like it. OK, it's there if you need it. It's one of those things that I probably wouldn't go much near. Structural openings. We can then create our structural openings as well. So we're going to go into an existing warm. It's going to be a medium opening of about three meters. I'm going to create that opening now as well. So we've got three meters in width, 2.1 meters to the underside of the still. 150 mil end bearing at either end. We've got yes or no to the pad stones. If it's no, then how many bricks are we going to be using? OK. And then we've got our plastering as well. Once I'm happy with that, we can then just confirm our back wall plastering as well. So we've done that knock through. We do have two sides of this existing wall now. So we've got the internal side, which would be the kitchen if we're doing a knock through to a kitchen. And the external side if we've gone... And we're estimated and we're decorating inside the extension as well now. So we've got plaster and skim the interior of the existing wall, we place the skirting on the inside anyway. And then we've got plaster and skim the exterior of the existing wall, add skirting. So we're going to be adding on that skirting on as well, doing a bit of a dot and dab. Okay. We could always go onto battens if we wanted to, and we can insulate that as well. Okay. We're then looking at external doors, windows, roof windows as well. So in this option, we've then got Aluminium, French, single, composite, PVC, and then we've also got some French doors, garage doors, and so on. If I were going to go for an aluminium bifold door, I could say, okay, how wide is this going to be? And it really depends on what we want to go with. I can go for a 3 2, so we've got a 4 door. Okay, we can get a U value in there of U value of 1. That's going to door. Select the color, and then we've got some opening types as well. We've then got four right, one left, three right, two and two, which is probably the go-to. Then we've got three and one the other side and four the other side. Once I'm happy with that, the software is then going to generate the lintel for me, the cavity closes, and how many of these do I want? I just want the one. Okay. So we've then got that there. Or if you wanted to, you can go for PVC as well so i can then start having a look at pvcu bifold doors and again it's the exact same we can select a color we can go from there really all right depending on what we want to work with once we're happy with that you can select that door select the lintel 
cavity closes. How many do we need? What you can do with this as well, if you're happy with the generation of the dimensions that we've got there, okay, what I can do is I can go into the di uh, I can go into the resources and I can see the price of the door on its own. So currently this door is £232,326.75. All right, so what you're looking at here is essentially about 580 quid a leaf, depending on what you're going to be working with. If you wanted to change this price, you can do that, and you can take full control of that as well. Okay, so what I can do is I can go up to the top where it says new resource. It's got all that information in there for me. However, I can then go, right, okay, then what I usually pay, a thousand pound a leaf. So I'm going to say this is going to be a four thousand pound door. Okay, I can create my own suppliers so i can go uh door supplier why not click ok pop in the merchant code click ok and then we've got that four thousand pound door in there as well with all the relevant information and the decoration options available to us okay so i can then do that from there i can do the exact same with the windows but there's no point it's the exact same process. And then the roof windows as well. These prices come start direct from Velux. Okay. So we can then start going through that as well with the opening type, control mode, width, height, color, glazing type, and so on. Okay. Once we've done that, we can then do the internal walls, depending on whether or not you're going to be building with them. Okay. So you have your internal cavity walls, your single skin walls, you have your timber frame or metal stud partition walls, depending on whether or not you're going to be working with that. And if I were to go into the dimensions here, we've got the height, distance of the studding centers. We can put in any doors if we wanted to as well. It's entirely up to us. Okay. And then we've got our plastering and decorating options available next to that. Once we're happy there, we've then got any sleeper walls that we may, be to, uh, may need to add in. We've also got our internal doors as well. And with the uh, single doors, we've got typical fire doors and panel doors. We've got some different sizes there for you as well, and whether or not they're going to be going into block work or studding. Difference with our software between block work and studding is that block work is going to still calculate for a concrete lintel, whereas a stud wall it won't, but it is going to also calculate for the door linings as well, just to make sure that that is all in there for you. All right. We then, depending on whether or not you are going to be doing, say, a full renovation of a kitchen as well, You've got the option available to then start going through the rooms function. Okay. And this will allow you to start creating, say, if we were just knocking into a kitchen, we can go and name this kitchen, click select. We then pop in the details and the dimensions of our kitchen. I can link some openings, such as that structural opening that I'm knocking through. And then what I can also do is, as well, is I can create a couple of doors and windows for this kitchen. And the reason why I will do that will become apparent in a moment. So I'm just going to go 2.1 here, a width of 0 0.9, reveal depth 0 0.05, keep that as an internal door. And then I'm just going to do the exact same, really, 1 1.2, 1 1.8, oh, 0 0.05, why not? Call that a window, click OK. Once I'm happy with that there, I can hit the drop down box and I can go for renovation doing that i can then start doing an internal stripping out and an internal renovation as well i've got chasing walls if i want to do that also but what i can then do is i can look at the internal renovation click add worksheet and it gives me a list of options and jobs that i may be doing during this renovation as well so we've got hackle walls replaster skirt and decorate to your reskim skirt and decorate and so on so if i was going to hackle walls replaster skirt and decorate i can click select it's pulled in the height, the overall length of the walls as well, whether or not we're going to be stripping wallpaper, hacking plaster from the walls. Yes, we are. Your typical thickness of plaster as well. Decoration options. And as you can see, there's a lot of no going on because we've already said no to our decoration options. We then have that dimension of the door that I put in. So are you going to be removing the architrave? Yes, we are. Refit existing architraves? Yes or no. Removing the threshold strip of the internal doors? Yes or no. Removing the skirting? Yes or no, refitting existing, yes or no. And then we have the exact same for the windows. We have our structural opening in there as well. And then we have a ceiling. Are you going to be ripping down the ceiling, 
replastering, redecorating, reinsulating, and so on. Okay, once we've done that, we can then talk about the internal stripping out. So we can see about any doors or windows that we're going to be removing. Room stripping out as well. So any wood floor coverings that we want to remove, any fireplaces we may want to brick up. Any water, gas, or electric supply that we want to uh, refit or defit. Defit? Just made up a word there. And then we're household stripping out as well. So radiators to remove the price of disposal of radiators as well. Okay. Bathroom suites, bathroom wall tiles, kitchen units, appliances to put disposal of that. And then how many hours you want to actually give you guys to take this out. So if it is a kitchen, you're probably going to go, all oh, right, we're going to remove 11 units, um, three appliances. And if the scrap guys don't come pick it up, it will cost us 100 quid with the council. OK, how long am I going to give my guys to do this? Three guys one day, 24 hours worth of work. All right. So you can do that as well. And you can dedicate that. Once you're happy with that brand new plaster shell, not decorated yet, no kitchen in there yet either. You can then start saying, right, OK, then we can start looking at some fitting out. So a natural stone floor tile. We've got the length and the width of the room. A cost per square meter for the stone tile. You might have a client that says, I'll buy the stone tile. Can you just fit them if that's the case? Zero that little box out. And then it will calculate you just doing the fitting for you. All right. You've also got the option of being able to add in groups of electrical items and plumbing items. So for plumbing items, if I click this box here, I can just go to other rooms and just click kitchen. What the software will then do is calculate the square meterage of that room for me and then say, OK, then on this square meterage, 19.25 square meters, you are going to need. A rad of this size to make sure that you hit the right U values, OK, because we've got SAP reports just built into the software that are just doing these calculations for you. OK, so you've got that option available as well. Not only that, you can do the exact same for the electrical items. So we can go kitchens. This is going to be a breakfast area and a utility room. Do that. Come down. We've then got our electrical sockets, our lighting, double oven, electrical hobs, extractor fans, TV points. And I can start adding in other options here as well, depending on what I want to do. OK. And once that's there, I can click close. I can then add in another room if I'm going to be doing another bit of renovating another room renovation as well okay if you didn't like the rooms function that's absolutely fine you can just do other bits and pieces as well so we've got our plastering here we've got basic plaster patching through to basic rendering complete room plastering and so on yeah i think i do mean btu for the rads actually joe thank you for that sorry <laughs> kind of got away with myself there But then what we can do is we can actually go through the plastering as well. Okay, if you're doing a block and block with render uh, extension, the likelihood is you're going to go through the rendering of the house as well. Okay, so what we can then do is just say basic rendering to walls and we can then render the rest of the house. And you can then say whether or not it's going to be K rendered, depending on what you want to use, really sand and sand and cement and so on. From there, we've then got decoration options. So you could be going around the rest of the house doing a little bit of decorating. Okay, so this could be door stripping. Radiator decoration, skirting boards, and other mouldings for walls as well, if you want to do that for a client, making everything look nice and shiny with the primer. Next, we've then got the structural beams and posts. So we've done our structural opening. We've not selected the steel for that yet, but that might not be the only steel that we need to use. We could be doing a structural opening, but then we could be doing uh, goalpost steels, and we could be doing and creating a bit of a, a metal monster inside the house. OK, if that is the case, all you've got to do is just come in here. So add estimating calculators. Go for your steel beams first or your posts, depending on how you want to work. And then as long as you've got the structural engineer's details, you'll be able to find those stills in the software. So I can go for type. So we've got your circular hollow section, your flat plates, your joists and so on. I want to go down a universal beam. We can then select a height. So a 254. We can then give it a 102. Why not? And then you've got your weight bearings next to that as well. If I go for the one in the middle, we can select that steel. We've then got the width, the overall width as well with that steel, so 3.3. We've then got the plastering options. And then we've got the labor and plant requirements as well. So are you going to be using craftsmen, laborers? Are you going to be fitting crane as well? And then we've got in here uh, plant type 1 and type 2. So essentially what it's saying here is you've got acros, you've got strong boys, you've got needling. 
And whether or not you want to use one, two, all of them, it's entirely up to you. It's just giving you different options as well. Okay, click finish. We've got our steel, and then we can go back into that. So I've got a couple of questions about uh, decoration to stairs. Okay, so if I go back in here and click decoration, so as we can see here, I can go down. So we've got staircase wall decoration in there. So if I were to click select, we can start seeing, oh, dim, the height of the walls, the slope of the staircase in degrees, the horizontal length of the stairwell as well. We can then go through the specification of decoration to the walls. Are the walls to be decorated? We've said no to decoration, but we can flip that around and go, yes, they will be. Are the walls to be papered? No, they aren't. Are the skirting to be primed? Yes, they are. And they're to be decorated as well. And then we can start talking about any windows as well if we wanted to, depending on whether or not we're doing that. Are we going to be stripping wallpaper from walls? Additional time for room preparation if you're going to be dealing with that. Uh, are we going to need ladders, other plant, and so on? Window details, ceiling details, if you're going to be painting the ceiling as well. So you can do that as well. All right. So I've just got a question here as well for somebody that um, turned up a little bit later. Okay, so where do we actually get our prices for materials and labor from? So when we've gone for labor, we've actually sent out emails to our users to ask them, right, how much are you paying your guys on site? How much are you paying yourself? Once we've got that information back, we've uploaded that into the software as a an average when it comes to your labor. And unfortunately, that is the best anyone can ever do when it comes to your labor rates, because you might be charging as a bricklayer £250 a day, whereas someone might be charging £300 a day and you could be living four or five doors apart. All right. It's it's almost impossible for us to be able to track that as a labor rate. So what we've done is we've just stuck the averages in there for you and we can help you upload your own or get your own prices in there all right so we're happy to do that when it comes to your material rates now we're working with travis trade point and key line straight out of the box and we're taking the national average of materials across the uk and we're putting them into your regions to upload into the software all right so you've got um southeast southwest midlands northeast northwest scotland okay so we're updating it that way however what we can do is we can work with your local merchants and we can also work with the likes of your travis trade point and keyline accounts if you have accounts with them so we can just make sure that these prices are what we are following as well all right back to the estimate we've then got walling sundries if you are going to be offering any critiquing or uh dog toothing dental coursing as well for your clients cladding work chimneys We've then got renovation and demolition. So chasing walls, demolition of walls, external renovation as well. Gypsum silent floor renovation. I can scroll down a little bit further. We can then have a roof renovation, temporary house and drive protection, underpinning and shuttering, underpinning without shuttering. And then we've also got universal roof tiling as well, depending on whether we're going to open that uh, or offer that to our client. Any additional plumbing items or electrical items as well? Any additional fitting out, this could be um, carpet if you want to offer that for a client, electrical underfloor heating, feature fireplaces, drainage and services. We've then got add estimating calculators, so we can do this all individually. Or what we can do is we can go to the add groups of items and we can have a look at foul drainage or your surface drainage. So we've got drainage plan for extension using a mini digger. That's definitely going to be used. All right. And then we've also got some descriptions of something that you might well be doing and looking at a little bit later on. So we do have, um, let's have a look at surface drainage extension with two rainwater connections to an existing soakaway with concrete protection. That might be damn near close to what you're doing at the moment. So you can then click that, click select. And then it's opted to add all this information in there for you for each individual item. And then what you can do then is you can go, right, okay, then for this part, I'm going to have a couple of ends. I'm going to have X, Y, and Z, and I'm going to be happy with that. And then you can go back to the front and go, and I need my Wave and Aquacell modular soak away. All right. So you can do that as well if you need to. Okay. So I'm just going to pop these away. Terribly sorry. Hold on a moment. 
Click close and then we can click completed. Um, just had a question that can this be used for low energy construction such as new build, passive house or retrofit? So absolutely, yes. I mean, what you can do is with this software, there's something that you weren't part of at the beginning of the demonstration when we were going through our specification. In that specification, you can start tweaking it to be more of a low energy household, just to make sure that you are covering those particular U values as well. All right. So you want to make sure that if you are going to be covering and you do need to follow those, those rules, we can help you do that within this software. If not, we can recommend some uh, another package for you as well. OK, which is very similar to this. From there, we've then got external work. So your block paving, tarmac drive, site strip. So we can do that as well, whether it's by hand, by JCB, mini digger. Landscaping, so that your turfing, your decking, fencing, if that's something you wanted to offer. We then have a look at your prelims and sundries and say about cleaning costs, site establishment. COVID-19 control costs as well. So we then have our cleaning costs. And we're going to tell our client, okay, then we're going to send somebody in for 150 quid and they're going to make everything look very, very shiny. All right. From there, we can then also do site establishment. This is anything from small extension. Small extension used in customer toilet. They might be very nice and allow you to use it. So we can go for the small extension there. We've got site cabin, site toilet. Lengths of security fencing, the likelihood is on a job like this, you probably wouldn't have a site cabin, so I can zero that one out. But then the site toilet, we can save right, we're going to at least have that for 12 weeks. Security fencing, whether it's necessary or not, JCB to clear the site, we've got a zero on that. The site compound base, if you have to knock that one out. Sundry project costs, such as uh, your insurances, site security costs, health and safety costs, any traffic regulation costs that you might incur as well and then you've also got your COVID-19 control costs this is something that we've recently added into the software due to the fact that we need to make sure that you are all following your uh, your COVID restrictions really and your COVID control restrictions so if I go for a small extension we can then start looking at social distancing vests disposable face masks washable face masks disposable gloves face visors helmet mounted visors additional PPE and it goes into essentially everything you need to know to make sure that you are following the right um, the right rules when it comes to the HSE and COVID. Okay, so you then have number of hand sanitizers required, cost of hand sanitizer stations, hand sanitizer refills required, number of hand sanitizer bottles, disinfectant spray, allowance for signages, signages, signage, posters, stickers, and then additional site supervision if necessary. Site setup and labor time as well. So you've got that option available for yourself. All right. Lastly, we can then start looking at the subcontract quotations, things such as your scaffolding. More often than not, you're going to be saying to your client, right, okay, then, uh, not you to your client, your scaffolding, give me a price. So I can just go erect scaffold, cost allowance, 650 quid, build phase, hit the drop down box, we've got a erect scaffold. Brilliant. We can then add in a we can fit the kitchen for the client as well if we we're going to be doing that. Fit the kitchen, cost allowance. We'll do that for two grand. Build phase, internal fitting out, click OK. That's that done as well. All right. And you can add in other subcontract quotations if necessary. All right. Well, I'm happy with that. We then have at the very bottom the additional templates. Now, what we could do is if you want to stay here for about 10, 11 o'clock, we can start doing different templates as well. But I probably think you don't want to. So if this was just one part of three or four parts of a job, you can just come to this part here and then kick off the next bit. And then you can break down your quote part by part, really. OK, and then you can get to the very end and you can find the overall quote. But once we're happy with everything that we've done, we can then see, right, OK, then without decoration right now, and we've gone through everything, we can click main estimate on the left hand side. Look at the job overview, and we can see that at the moment our job is £42,958.71. pence. Profit and overhead is £12,887.61. Sale price before VAT 
is 55,846. So essentially you're looking at, oh, quick maths, quick maths, quick maths, about, I'd say 67,000 probably, there or thereabouts. Yeah, there or thereabouts, I'm sure it is. That's about 20%, isn't it? Yeah. So we can then do that. If you didn't want to go through any of the materials through the last page, that's absolutely fine. What you can do is you can actually just go through the build phases here or the estimating calculators here. It's entirely up to you. Click on the page or click it here. Click open. Open again. And then you can start looking at what you're paying as well per, per unit of information as well. So we've got your insulation blocks. 11 pound per square meter that's about right okay coursing blocks cavity insulation as well really depending on what you're working with okay once you're happy with that you can go back to your main estimate and then you can start rounding your materials which is very important something that we haven't had in the software for a very long time something that i started with the company eight years ago okay and i was asking for it from day one and it's just come in in the last month or two which is staggering so what we've got there is we've got resource quantity rounding what this is going to allow you to do is that with a lot of other estimating packages you'll see it as well they'll say that you need 1.67 rolls of tarp and you're thinking mm, can't order that that's a little bit weird um so i just had a question is all the material cost excluding vat yes it is all right just so you're aware all the cost is excluding that so what this page does for you and we can go rules applied in job you can start seeing the rounding and what we're doing for you now the most important one to look at out of these three columns is this third column here okay it's because this is how we're rounding it for you so with your ballast sand bulk bag we need before any wastage 3.63 bags of sand with the wastage that we have applied to sand, that goes up to 4.53. But you wouldn't order four and a half bags of sand. So what we've done is we've rounded up to five bags for you with ordering half a bag. Now, it's entirely up to you. You could see here that you need 3.63 bags. So you can go, right, actually, you know what? I'm happy with actually doing this in four bags here. All right. So if you're ready to do that, you can click that box, type in four, and it will override what we've done for you. Okay. and that's what you can do as well and we just tell you to just keep an eye on this column here and i say just to have a look at the high numbers p gravel is saying that you're going to need eight bags but before wastage it's saying that you need 5.6 you could probably say ah you know what i'll go away with seven there because when it comes to p gravel the guys love to chuck it around the ground a lot because it can never sit on the shovel you can do that as well okay and you can go through this would you happy with that go back to where it says main setting Click Add Resource Rounding, click OK. And that's now been applied to your job as well. Once you're happy with that, you can then have a look at the build program to say, right, OK, then am I happy with the gangs that I've selected straight away? So we've got site setup, we've got our general laborer and uh, building design coordinator, so site manager, might as well call them that. Internal prep, these are our gangs foundations, footings, and so on. We'll just, just tweak this to make sure that we are happy with that. Once we've done that as well, we've then got the build programs as well. Internal preparation, are we happy with the days that we're doing there? Site so setup, commencement, and so on. And then this is our chart from start to finish. Okay. And then we've got that chart i've just had a couple of questions come through so can bathroom and kitchen supply be added on to the software yes they can okay so depending on who you're working with if you can get a material price list we can get that into the software that's not a problem at all okay uh if you've changed any of the figures will they reset to default on your next estimate absolutely yes so what you're doing here is this will take you um this will cover you for this particular job all right in your main library on the main page if you want to tweak prices discounts teams 
do it there and that's going to do the overall okay yep you can order direct from travis if you want to we can create a material list for you as well all right just about to get to those reports okay what you can actually do here is if i had a look at this particular build phase i can go to my masonry shell over on the left hand side we can highlight it and what might happen is with the masonry shell it snows in britain for one day and it sends us back two weeks all right and what we can do there is we can then pop that back a couple of weeks and that's going to have a direct impact on the rest of our job okay so it pushes everything back as well so it's always going to be linking into it and this is what you'd call a critical path okay so you can't do your roof structure without the masonry shell nothing can go ahead okay in that masonry shell as well i can click resource breakdown on the right hand side And then you can see exactly what we're going to need to order and who we're going to have to do in their particular jobs, how long it's going to take, how long it's going to cost, and how much it's going to cost as well. Okay, so it breaks all this information down for you for every build phase from the footings, oversight and slabbing, and so on. And as you can see, we've got our days and our guys in there as well. We've got our mini digger in there also. All right. Once I'm happy with that, I can then go to the outputs. So outputs here, we've got graph reports, so we can go cost by trade, profit by trade, and so on. Okay, we can then see our data reports, cost including VAT, cost summary reports. One that a lot of people do like to use is the um, materials by type. So we can click open here. And this doesn't break it down by build phase. However, what it will do is it will just say, okay, all the aggregate. This is exactly what you're going to be using. So your blue circle master create original cement, building sand bulk bag, pea gravel shop, sand sub base. This is how much you're paying for those. This is how you buy them in. This is who you're getting it from. So this could be Travis, Trade Point, Keyline, uh, depending on who else you want to use. Okay. Their product code. It's going to tell you exactly how many bags you're going to need and how much that's going to cost you. Okay. So this is one way of looking at the material breakdown. Another way could be your material order schedule, which would then be linked into, again, your Travis, your Trade Point, your Keyline, depending on when you need to order to when you can get them on site. So you can see your site setup, drains, footings. But we can see here that we need to start ordering our materials last week because I didn't tweak the uh, the date of the job, it seems. And they're going to be for the footings, engineering brick, facing bricks, bricks and splash course, who we're getting them from, what their material uh, material order number, resource code is, how much we need to order, and how much it's going to cost us as well. Okay, so you can do that. We've then got materials used as well, and it'll break it down by build phase for you. Okay, we've got many different reports that you can be looking at. Okay, so it's just to make sure that we can tweak it in such a way that we can sit down with you and make sure that you've got it in the way that you want it to look. At the very end, you can then have a look at the written documentation. So, quote for the main estimate. And this is a quote. From our client, uh, for our client, sorry, so single story extension for our client uh, at the address. And that information is displayed on the right hand side. We can then include our logo, place it where we need it to do, click save logo settings, and we don't have to worry about that again. We can then scroll down a little bit further. We then have our introductory statement. So if I scroll down a little bit further again, we then have that detail there, and we can copy and paste in whatever we want. We can include in our own letterhead as well. We have a summary for the job as well. So we can then say show summary after breakdown if we're going to be sending this via PDF. We then have our site setup, description, image, things we're going to be using as well. So we've got our COVID-19 control costs, commencement, foundations, brief description, detail of some of the material that we're going to be using and the and the cost. Now you might not like what we're showing here, and that's absolutely fine. So what you can do is you can go to the build phase, you can take out the image, you can take out the resource, and then your quote's gonna look something a little bit more like this. Okay, it's entirely up to you what you want. Now, what we're also doing for you as well is we're telling your client when the building inspector is going to be on site, just to tell them there might be a change in price. Only because the building inspector could come out and go, well, you know what, foundations have to be deeper than this, I'm sorry. I, I'm not I'm not convinced. And if that is the case, it's gonna be an additional cost and that shouldn't be coming out of your pocket. That should be their pocket because at the end of the day, that's where they live. 
So what we've done for you is under the description of the foundations, we've gone excavate for foundations using mechanical plant if required and cast foundations. Please note that the building control officer will inspect the foundation prior to concreting and may require changes to the foundation depth and construction. Variations for additional excavation, trench support and concrete, etc. will incur additional costs. OK, so if they came back to you and went, well, you didn't say it's going to cost anything extra, you could easily point back to the quote and go, actually, we did. You, it wasn't my fault that you didn't read the terms and conditions or the descriptions that we've done. OK, and at the very bottom, when we're happy with that, you'll have the acceptance of the estimate. Something for you and your client to sign. You can change all the wording as well. It's entirely up to you. And then there's a second one for you both to sign as well, just to make sure that everybody is happy with that. OK, I do have a couple of questions. So first, let's go back. Is this webinar going to be a recording? Yes, it will. So I will be able to make sure that this goes on an email out to everybody. If you did miss a little bit of it, you can pick it up. OK, can you live link the quote to a builder's merchants in case of a delay, for example? Um, not as of yet. I mean. No, I'm going to say no uh, for that. OK. Um, but there's something I can go away and ask whether or not we can do it. Absolutely. Uh, are there contingencies in place? You do have the option of being able to add in assumptions and emissions, provisional sums, just in case anything does go wrong. You can add additional days onto your work as well. That doesn't affect the um, the actual cost of the job. So you can really tweak that bill program today, play into a contingency just in case you're thinking, Christ, we've got some bad weather coming our way in the next couple of weeks. What do you think we can do? So we've just had uh, I've just had a question here and it's quite important is that is it possible for your team to look into splitting the build program job schedules to take into account not working on the weekend or one day over the weekend. Now what the software does for you it, even though it's saying it's taking seven days it's presuming that it's going to be working on a five day week. OK. However we do have a project management package that goes into a lot more detail about project management than this does. That build program don't get me wrong is it's very nice for what it is. However, don't look at it as a project management opportunity. Use it as a bit of a guide than anything else. If you're looking at project management software, um, we do have something that can allow you to look into um, holidays, uh, religious holidays as well, your weekends, bank holidays, your estimated versus actual costs, your cost variances as well to see whether or not you're gonna be making money or losing money on certain build phases. We have a package that can allow you to do that, and that's aside from this. And if you would like to have a look at that, I can I can happily phone you up, give you a demonstration on that, or send you out the trial. You can have a play around with it as well. All right. And that, everyone, believe it or not, is Estimator Express. And uh, we've done a quote, a pretty quick one, um, in about an hour. So you can see the speed of the software and how it can get out. We have had, and we've got testimonials for this as well, that people have just hit the ground running with the software. Uh, they've not changed any of the prices. They're happy with the out, uh, the price at the very end of it as well. Sent it over to a client, and they've got the job. Okay. And you, we're not saying that that's going to happen straight away, and it's not going to happen without help, but the software is used, tested, and confirmed to work in the industry. Okay. Does anybody have any questions before we sign off for the rest of the day? Uh, new build and basements. Absolutely. It's the exact same package. However, as I've gone for a, um, uh, an extension here, you're not seeing those um, those calculators, but those calculators are in the software. Um, so, yes, you will be using the exact same package. Um, so the package will be uh, the recording will be available, hopefully by end of play tomorrow, if not Friday morning. First thing. Is there going to be a Mac version coming up? Now, that's it's touch and go, really, when it comes to Mac. Now, we are heavily investing a lot of time and effort into trying to get a cloud version of the software to run on a, uh, on a Mac. And it's the only way that we can feel that's going to be a cheaper option for our users. Unfortunately, like most estimating packages and most building um, and company packages, they are built on Windows because it's cheaper for us as a company to do that because we don't have to pay the extortionate prices of Apple um, Apple guarantees and their their licensing. Uh, 
Okay, so it is predominantly built for a Windows machine, but we have, we do offer trial and errors with different cloud options. Uh, one of them was an American one, which worked slightly well until that company went out of business, which was a, a kicker for us, really. Um, but it is something we are looking into. Um, how much is the software? Okay, if the software packages and the costs really depend on what you want it to estimate at the end of the day. So we have three versions of this software. We have one that does extensions and renovations, one that does extensions, renovations, loft conversions, plumbing and heating, and then a final one that does all of that plus new build housing, basements, commercial work, and so on. Okay, the reason why we have the three versions is because somebody that's doing extensions and renovations that are never going to do new builds or aren't there yet, they don't really want to be paying for everything. They just want to have a couple of the a uh, couple of the calculators, and that's fine. And that's why we've broken it down. Not only that, you then have an option of being able to subscribe annually, so every twelve months, or you can buy a lifetime license. Now there are pros and cons of both. Really, lifetime license is more expensive on your initial purchase. Okay, compared to your subscription cost. However, with a lifetime license, after 12 months, your software will still work. And if you want to have your support and updates at well, it will cost you £18 a month. Okay, if you didn't want to do that after 12 months and you wanted to leave it 12 months, 24 months, you can come back, just reinstate that £18 a month. You'll have all the new calculators that we've invented over the previous two years, three years, and you'll... um. You'll have all your support in place as well if you need any refreshing or so on. When it comes to your subscription, it's going to be that price every year going forward. And I can, um, there is a caveat in place as well that ha gives us the right to say that that price can be inflated depending on the market. So um, it really depends on what you're actually looking for. Okay. What? can the software not do if you're looking at estimating an airport the software won't be able to estimate an airport for you i'll be totally honest this is built for uh your extensions your housing your flats okay not your two tower flats i'm looking at your maybe three floor four story flats as well okay so you can cover that with the software with the structural still work that is in the package okay so depending on the costs that you're going to be looking at, we do have deals running this month as it is Christmas. Okay. <clears throat> so the prices are on the website as we, here we go. I'm just going to bring that up on the page for you. So you can see that I'm not telling any lies. So these are the costs available for you. Okay, so the outright price for the Estimator Express Core is nine nine nine. Then you've got one two nine nine, one six nine nine for the premium, and then we've also got the subscription costs per year are three nine nine, four nine nine, and five nine nine. You might be seeing this Enterprise Edition here as well. Okay, now the Enterprise Edition that allows you if you're going to be working in a building with several um estimators okay the enterprise edition gives you something called the manager collaborator okay and that essentially that is it's a fee that we set up so essentially all the estimating packages talk to one single hub and that way then you'll see what everybody's doing at any one time okay so, but that's more for uh companies that offer estimating as a service for other builders really okay with several people doing that uh, can a Metsex system be added? We are actually working on those at the moment to be added into the software. So absolutely, you will be able to see that in the coming months. Okay. Uh, does anybody have any more questions? I think I've kind of covered most of them, to be fair. Can you upgrade your software? Absolutely. Okay. And what you do is you don't pay anything additional. There's no like APR or anything like that. You pay the difference. Okay. Um, so yeah, essentially you pay the difference. Metsec, uh, it's um, it's a, it's a new metal form of being able to do extensions. It's a um, it's something that's. Yeah, it's it's becoming more renowned in the last year, I'd say. I've actually had a I've got a friend that's going through that um that particular uh that build at the moment with his extension. It's not really my cup of tea, to be fair. 
Um, but it's something that we are uh, we are doing. Is it only one user per license? No. What you do is at the very beginning when you purchase the software, you get two users. Well, okay, we've got. I was going to say M H R. MVAHR, MVHR. Let's have a look here. So you're looking at more heating systems when you're looking at that. Men yeah, uh, ventilation. I mean, we do have HVAC in this software. Um, so if you are looking at heating systems and boiler systems and that around a house, absolutely. So, I mean, yes, we we are developing that aspect of our software as much as we can because we would really like to tackle more of that um heating and ventilation industry as well as the electrical industry as well don't get me wrong for your typical builds this this software does do everything you need however it is always being updated all the time as well um if you're the main primary contractor uh what software would i recommend really depends on what you are doing i mean at the end of the day if you can afford it um i always say the plus edition only because it will do extensions renovations loft conversions plumbing and heating it's going to cover you for that just in case it is something that you are taking those steps forward if you are doing new build housing okay then you will need the premium edition of the software okay And then, pause you, Joyce. Ah, believe it or not, yeah, this is actually something that um, we are working with a company at the moment to try and get um, pause joists into the software. Uh, even I'm, I'm actually building an extension on the side of my house um, and a porch from the front, and I want to use them. So I've been doing a lot of research into that myself, and that's something that we are working with as a company to try and get them in there as well. If anybody doesn't know what a pause joists are, they're essentially um, – they're – they're timber joists that have gaps in the middle, so feeding through extra joists for additional support. It's um it's very much a cross section type thing. It's brilliant, and it allows you to run electrical cables through that as well without having to go absolutely nuts drilling major holes. It's 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 wonderful stuff. It is wonderful, and that's something we are looking at as well. Uh, if you wanted to upgrade from plus to premium after a while, again, you would pay you would pay the difference, really. It, I, and again, it really does look at where you are within that. If you've gone 11 mo 10 months, 11 months on a subscription and you want to upgrade to the uh, to the premium from the plus, you'll be paying a very small amount because you're only going to be using the plus for a very short amount of time. OK, so it really depends where you are in the year. Okay. Uh, does anybody else have any other questions? Oh, I did see one that I I, I missed as well. Um, do we have different plastering options available? Yep, we do have. Essentially, if you need it to do a certain type of work, absolutely, we can help you out in that regard. If you have a certain style of work that you like to follow, we can help you create calculators in the software. Also, I mean, the thing is that if you offer a service and the software doesn't have a calculator, we will sit down and help you create that calculator in the software. OK, and if you are doing uh, refurb work and re uh, refurbishment work as well, a uh, renovation work, I would I would highly recommend the premium. It would cover you for that. Okay. But no, I'd like to thank everybody for coming this evening. Um, is there any limits to the support? No. Believe it or not, there's um if you look at our testimonials on the uh, on our website, okay, it says nothing about the salespeople because we're we're bad salespeople to be fair. We're not very good, if I'm honest. But the technical team, we pride ourselves on what they offer to our users. Now we say when you purchase the software, you get unlimited telephone support. You get online support as well. So people like me, we're sitting there in the evening, we're covering the phones. We've got people in America working on the software as well, just to make sure that if you are doing estimating late, late into the evening, we can cover you for that. 
okay but when it comes to the support there is no asterisk to say unlimited okay it is you phone us up as much as you need and we'll be able to help you out uh still frame is supported as well uh and there's no additional charge for uh for new build either so if you're going for premium you're going to have new build in there from from the get-go All right. Does anybody have any more questions before I leave? Would anybody like a call tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon for me to be able to discuss in a little bit more detail pricing, potential purchases? Brilliant. Okay. I'll give you a call. Excellent. Ah, fantastic. All right. Okay. Brilliant. Well, look, thank you ever so much, everyone, for coming this evening. I, I can't thank you enough. Okay. All right. Perfect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be able to contact everyone that's actually asked me to contact them tomorrow. Okay. We can go through um, the different deals that we have as well. As I said, we do have deals running at the moment. You're just not seeing them on the website. Okay. So phone calls will, at the end of the day, get you good deals. Okay. So it's something that we can do. All right. But everyone that's been asked to get contacted, I will call you tomorrow. Okay. Um, anywhere between the times of 9 to 12. If you do want to get contacted at a certain time, just type it in now and I can give you a call back then. Okay. Okay. Somebody's in contact with my other colleagues as well. Brilliant. Don't worry. I'll make sure that he gives you a call as well. All right. Afternoon. Not a problem, Joe. I can do that. Not a problem at all. All right. Thank you ever so much, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Take care. Beers. Right. <laughs> Perfect. Not a problem at all. I'll give everybody a call. Thank you ever so much and have a wonderful evening. Cheers, guys.